Hey Jim, how's it going? <gasps> hey there, Galley of the Sun! So, did you know that on June 18th, 1984, Van Halen's masterpiece, Panama, was released? Great song! Worth celebrating! Yeah, yeah. So, I'm down here at the Panama Canal, and uh, I had an idea. Uh, we need to do another collaboration. I happen to be driving my backwards boat over to the canal right now. Maybe I'll see you in person. So, uh, what I'm going to do is make a Panamanian treat. It's called Cari Mignola. And basically, it's, it's like an empanada, but the dough is basically a mashed up yucca plant. Yeah, so uh, I've had it, it's fantastic. Tastes like a, uh, a stuffed french fry. So how could it possibly be wrong? That dish sounds awesome. I love a yucca. What you making? I'm gonna be making a drink from Panama. It's called chicheme. I better hurry up and get back to my kitchen so I can make this drink. Good seeing you, buddy. Oh, that sounds incredible. Well, I think it's going to be another stellar collaboration between the two of us. Can't wait to see what you have. <music> Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. Like you saw in the intro, today we are making a treat from Panama. Recently, Char, Greg, the director, and I went on a Panama Canal cruise, and we sampled the incredible cuisine of Panama, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, and Costa Rica. And every bit of it was fantastic. So, we're going to create something we had in Panama, Cari Mignolas. It is a very popular street food, and uh, basically it's a lot like an empanada, Except, uh, you know, you heard me in the intro, but I was wrong. So it's made from the yucca plant. Now, the yucca plant, which is Y-U-C-A with one C, it is a root plant, basically. Think like a potato, where a yucca plant grows in the desert and has these sword-like uh, leaves on it. So we're not talking yucca, we're talking yucca. So... That's the first thing we're gonna do. So of all places, believe it or not, Walmart is where I got my yucca. Uh, I got Goya brand frozen yucca uh, for this dish. That is the preferred way to go because if you just get fresh yucca, then you gotta peel it, which is really a pain in the butt. These come already peeled. So I took these and uh, I boiled them for about 20 minutes. The next step is, I'm gonna pull these out, and the center of these are some, uh, some stringy threads. We wanna get rid of those, and then we're gonna take this mess and mash it like a potato. Okay, and this first one here, you can see, it, it only has two or three of these little strings. Uh, it looks like when you get these frozen that they are pretty much cleaned out, but you will wanna go through there because this here, the, the string is very, very tough. So it is not gonna get mashed up and you'll end up with that thing between your teeth. You don't want that, you don't want it. So we'll get them out. Hey, get down. Get down. No. Okay, we have all of our yucca dethreaded. Now goes in about six tablespoons of butter at room temperature a couple cackleberries, about half a cup of water. If you're smarter than me, reserve the water that you use to boil your yucca in. I didn't, I just dumped the whole thing through a strainer. So, the water, and then about four tablespoons of flour, and then about four teaspoons of salt, which is about a tablespoon plus a teaspoon. Now all that, we're gonna mash up, and that's gonna be the breading 
for our Kerry Mignolas, which like I said, it's basically like a cross between an empanada and a stuffed french fry. The director's rolling her sleeves up because obviously it looks like I'm not doing this right. All right, I'm gonna use this opportunity to use my rarely used, it's a lot of uses in one sentence, potato ricer. Which I think will work perfect for this, unless it doesn't. They're never gonna let me in Panama again. Try number three, maybe this will work. Well, it's working a hell of a lot better than the ricer was. All right, so the egg beaters worked. We have our yuca dough together. Now I'm gonna cover that with a towel, set it aside, and we'll get to working on the filling. For that, we're going over to the stove. For the filling, I'm gonna get a skillet on medium-high heat. Add a little bit of olive oil. Then once that starts shimmering, in goes our onions, and that's not a bell pepper. And our bell pepper, and we're gonna cook those until they soften a little bit. All right, we're shimmering, in goes the onions and the bell peppers. As always, all the ingredients, their amounts, and the directions are down in the description. I'm about to be throwing a lot of spices around. Don't trust what I say out loud. In fact, I'm not even gonna say amounts. All the amounts are down below. And remember, it's up to your taste, okay? I'll tell you the truth, most of our uh, recipes say two cloves of garlic, four cloves of garlic. Really? We double that. We like the garlic. My onions and peppers are almost where I want them. Now I'm gonna add the garlic. Now in goes the ground beef. Of course we're using our aged ground beef. Regular ground beef will work for you too. Once we have that broken up a little bit and mixed in with the vegetables, in goes our spices. We got our salt, got our paprika some chili powder, some allspice, some adobo seasoning. We have those spices mixed in. Now goes our diced tomatoes, our tomato paste. And then this interesting Central American ingredient, reciado, I'm guessing. It's basically cilantro-based cooking base. The stuff smells absolutely amazing and it tastes great too. We're gonna cook this until it's all well mixed and we see no more pink in the meat. My fryer is up to temperature, now it's time to put this together. Now, if you don't wanna use a deep fryer, you wanna be a little bit more healthy, down below are instructions for how to do it with an air fryer. It's been our experience, if you do it with an air fryer versus a fryer, it always comes out better in the fryer, more crispy, of course, because it's not as healthy, but uh, you know, you do you. So. We're gonna get our dough. We're gonna make about a two inch ball with our dough. Then we're gonna poke a hole into that dough. Get some of our filling in there. And then close it up. And if you need to sheet like me and use some more dough, just do that. You'll notice it's very sticky. My research has told me uh, the best place to uh, set these is on a plastic sheet. They don't stick as much on a metal sheet. But I've got that together. Now it goes into the fryer. Director, I need help. Because my hands are yucky, I don't want to just drop this in the fryer. That would be a safety violation. There we go. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna give that about five minutes and then give it a try. Hey, as I'm waiting on that first one to uh, get finished, if you're liking what you're seeing, please hit the like button. Hey, leave us a comment, it really helps us out. Have you had Kerry Miolas before? Do you like them? Where are you watching from? Or just simply, yum. We would love to hear from you.
All right, the uh, director made a kick-ass sauce for this. The instructions for that are down in the description. All right, the moment of truth. Now this is still hot, so we cut it apart so you can see the middle. Like I said before, it's a very popular street food in Panama. And the director had him down in Panama, so how did we do? Mm. Very good. Fantastic. A lot like a stuffed french fry, is it not? Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. Hey, this is definitely a snack you want to try, especially if you're a fan of empanadas. This stuff is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for joining us today. Until we see you next time, fair winds and following seas. Wow, that looks amazing. Here's mine. Chichime. Very thick.